Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Excited to be here again. My name is Matt Gerber, uh, Executive Director of the Diamond Allegiance, here with one of my favorites, uh, Pudge Jorman, um, owner, CEO, founder of MVP Baseball Academy and MVP Baseball International. Pudge, super excited to have you on today. Good to see you. Thanks for having me, Matt. It's exciting to be here and uh, from right here in Vienna, Virginia, and love uh, always love talking baseball and love talking about great things in the game. So thank Absolutely. you for having me. This should be a great conversation. Pudge has been around this thing for a long time. So, um, so let's, let's jump in Pudge. How did you, uh, you know, how'd you fall in love with the game of baseball and, you know, tell me your story of in the game. You know, I always loved, uh, it goes back to the grassroots day. The story is actually uh, pretty interesting. Um, I, uh, I fell in love with the game of baseball at an early age, just from the minute I played it, playing in the backyard, you know, we, you know, you grew up back in the day, you played, uh, you know, you'd go out in the backyard during the summertime, play baseball, you know, during the fall, you played football and then, and so on. And wintertime was basketball. And, you know, we always played everything, but um, just absolutely loved just everything about the game. And, and from as long as I can remember, um, you know, I think for me, it was the competition and the camaraderie with other kids and, uh, you know, but I will say this from the coaching standpoint of the game, I think that's the, for me, when I can pinpoint that it was, uh, I was in high school, uh, it was gosh, my junior year, I think it was going, going might have been my senior year, but that was my junior year in high school. Um, and my little brother, um, his basically, uh, his little league team, the head coach got called away a week before to go fly the Goodyear blimp in Papano Beach, Florida. So they lost their head coach. And uh, so one of the dads, there was nobody to step up and take the majors team. It was a good group. Long story short, uh, dad called me, said, look, I I'll head this up, but would you mind coming out? I know you play baseball. Would you, you know, you're a good player. Would you come on after practices and all that stuff? Would you come out and help us? We could practice at night. And so I, I said, absolutely. I'd love to. I always knew I wanted to be a coach growing up. I like when we go out and play in the neighborhood with friends, um, I love leading i love the ability to lead and and make decisions i don't know why but anyway so we ended up that team ended up going undefeated and we went to the town championship and we lost in the championship one to nothing i still remember oh. it was yesterday but i was absolutely hooked and this is a huge little league 1400 kids and you know vienna little league is is known i mean it's a power and uh so anyway i was hooked lock, stock, and barrel. And, and from that point on, man, I just, I wanted to coach and I love playing, but I, I, you know, I think there was a part of me that was like, okay, when I'm done playing, I, so I got into coaching where everybody says, when well, you got into coaching young, it was, uh, I literally, you know, stayed here, went to the community college and was coaching high school baseball, you know, my first year out of high school. So. Well, um, I'd love for you to, you know, talk to our listeners a little bit about that side of what you do. Um, you've been a high school coach for a long time and, um, you know, it, it's very, obviously very interesting and cool, right? Because a lot of, a lot of times, unfortunately, we do have, uh, you know, this, this battle between the high school and, and travel ball, right? And obviously the goal, I think of everybody within the Diamond Allegiance, one of the many goals is the is to try to marry those a little bit more, right? And understand that both can coexist. But talk to me a little bit um, about your high school coaching experience and, and what you do in that space. Well, I just finished 28 years at Madison High School, my 28th season at Madison. I don't plan on going anywhere. We, we were fortunate, uh, won a state championship and had a first round pick of Bryce Eldridge. And, uh, but we had, uh, gosh, nine players going, eight other players going to play in college. Uh, well, the program is is built to sustain, and it, it, it's a program. It's just not a team. It's a public or a public school in a great town. We call Vienna the town of champions, and uh, you know it's um, we're having a lot of fun. We'll be back in the weight room today. We were in there yesterday. I mean, it's it, you know I'm big on playing multiple sports. Go play multiple sports. But if you're not, you're not going home at three o'clock. You're going to do something to better yourself. And you know ultimately, um, you know we're real proud of what we built. You know Madison's a, had a long tradition and. You know, I just kind of am kind of continuing that that successful tradition. And, you know, we've, we've got more state championships than anybody in, in Northern Virginia. We just won our sixth uh, state championship last year in school history. So something we're proud of. We don't base it on state championships, but it's uh, the success is, um, you know, I think I, my, I guess the thing I would say is the consistency of the program. We've won 
just under 80% of our games in my 28 years. And that's because we have great kids, great players. And um, my staff is pretty much all former players who are back now. So um, that's the sign of, in my eyes, a great program. I do think what you said was very interesting. I think the battle between, I like to be, I'm on both sides. I, I have a, a baseball academy and MVP and I'm a high school coach. Not a lot of guys do both sides. And uh, but, um, I do think that that battle maybe that goes on, goes on in social media a little bit more. Um, right. but I, you know, I just had this conversation with my 24 fall team last night. Um, you know, I put, you know, where some guys will train and instruct and do all that. Everybody has a place in this game. And, and uh, the majority of guys have a great respect for each other because we're about making kids better and helping them achieve their goals. And that's what it should be about. One goal, get better. And uh, that being said, um, I think that, uh, you know, I put my money where my mouth is. My record goes out there every day. When you go on the high school field, you can't sit back and tell everybody how good you are. You can't talk negatively about other coaches and programs. You won't, you will not uh, make it in this business. Okay. And that's the thing. And, and I think, I think that's the thing I'm most proud of. I've got great relationships with other coaches, other academies, high school coaches. Heck, uh, Rob Honey, who I just played with, uh, played against in the state championship. We played each other five times. We were in the same conference this year. Uh, we're coaching this fall team together. So yeah. <laughs> that, tells, that speaks volumes about relationships. Absolutely, Budge, absolutely. So tell me a little bit. Let's transition. Um, you've got two kind of things going on. You've got MVP Baseball Academy, and then you've got MVP Baseball International. So tell me about what, what both programs are, um, how they started, when they started, and just a little bit more information on what they provide. Sure. Uh, MVP Baseball School um, or Academy, uh, as we call it, baseball and softball. We, we Scott Rowland, my partner Scott Rowland and I, at the time, we started in 2002. Um, not Scott Rowland, the uh, former major leaguer, but Scott Rowland, the uh, unbelievable high school baseball coach who's now coaching down at, uh, uh, at uh, where he's in uh, uh, Vero Beach High School down in Florida. Does a great job yep. there. He's an assistant now. So anyway, Scott left in 2000. I guess uh, we he kind of went and retired and did his thing in 2014, 13, 14. So anyway, uh, I'm the sole proprietor, but I've got incredible staff. I've got uh, you know, we, it, it's changed. It's evolved a lot uh, over the years as all these businesses have. And, um, you know, because, yeah, you know, there's a few different ways to do it. Um, our model, like I said, has been there since 2002 or 21 going on 22 years in. Uh, we went the team route in 2013. Uh, so we've got our, you know, basically we've got our 12 and under teams. We've got our middle school teams, which are you know, our Terps program and then our, you know, Eric Backage was our, our, our founder, you know, Eric, well, Eric uh, was the head coach at the University of Maryland. So when we started this and we did a lot of stuff together and Eric, uh, we, we kind of went the Terps route, even though we're from Virginia, uh, they're 45 minutes away. So uh, every Coach O'Connor wasn't mad at you about that? Uh, maybe a little bit. I don't think <laughs> that's all good, but we set kids there too. Uh, and then uh, at the uh, our MVP Dogs program is the high school group. So we've got over forty teams in our in our organization uh, from in the Smash Softball, which is that's relatively new. So anyway, um, you know it's, it's and we're still growing, and, and you know, but you can only grow as quickly as you. And I think that's advice I give anybody that's looking to build something you can only grow as quickly as you've got great coaches and great instructors and the team concept. So where, you know, some facilities might be more lesson based and all that work very team based. So we do a lot of team training, our busiest time uh, at our indoor facilities, literally from early December through March, because here it gets cold. And so, you know, we're 54 hours a week, we're booked 54, you know, mostly team training, a little bit of uh, lesson groups, things like that. But anyway, um, you know, just excited. We've got, you know, tremendous instructors. We've also got the ability to go in January and February on the turf to go do indoor camp, uh, defensive camps at our main facility. We do a lot of hitting and pitching. But, uh, you know, we spend a lot of time with hitters and uh, doing that. And But we, you know, we, we're, we've partnered up with catchers, you, Jack Ferrick, who will be speaking at the national conference. And, again, we've got a wonderful thing going with that. Now, MVP Internationals, uh, you do a 360. It's a total, you know, where we're developing players at the um, middle school level. I could go on and on about the, the, the middle school. I think everybody gets in this now wanting to go 
play in college. They, you know, these kids, it's silly for a 12 year old player to come out at 12 talking about college. We try to keep them, fo our focus is let's focus on being the best middle school player you can be and prepare to make your high school roster. And we've had great success. When we get the high school, then we start working toward being a varsity starter and a college player. The international part is, uh, that's really, uh, I, I could talk all day. It's MVP International Athletics. And it's not just baseball, but baseball is the core of where we come from, obviously. And that's, I run the baseball and softball part, but um, we've also got, you know, basketball, ice hockey, uh, lacrosse, you name it. We're sending, you know, we just sent over 500. We're, we got a yoga trip right now in Italy with a bunch of retired people, 36 wow. doing yoga, uh, wellness. Uh, we do pickleball. So anyway, we, uh, we, we set almost 550 travelers this year. COVID put a little sting in us. We started that in 2013 um, because I did go on trips in eight, nine, and 10 with a group out of the Midwest. Uh, a friend of mine, Brigham, uh, Brigham Joy, who called me, found me. I'd never left the country. I really thought travel for me was going to my beach place every year. So uh, um, I didn't even think about getting outside the world. But when I got the invite to lead a team, my wife said I was crazy because she'd been to Europe. I didn't even know that I had no idea how big baseball is overseas in Europe. I, I knew in Asia and Latin America. But anyway, since that time, um, we've grown and grown. COVID, we were really, I mean, we were rolling going in 2019. COVID hits in the travel world. It wasn't a one-year hit with COVID. It was really like a three-year hit. Uh, so that being said, last couple of years, we've gotten back on our feet. We, you know, we, we've never slowed down, but we uh, we worked on our growth plan. We're now sending teams from all over the country, uh, organizations from all over the country. And, um, you know, we've got teams right now working for, we're already selling 24. We've already got 30 trips on the book. Uh, and um, look for Coach Lopez from San Francisco. Uh, his organization's growing. Uh, we've got some teams coming out of Texas, out of South Carolina. So, again, we're very excited. Uh, we just brought a nice hockey team back from a tournament um, over in uh, Scandinavia. So, anyway, you know, the international thing is fantastic for boys and girls. We've got over 18 now. Uh, we, I, we just went and I actually coached with Ray Evans. Uh, who is a coach down in uh, Windermere High School in Florida with uh, yep. Coach Lasseter. Uh, we just led a team down in Parma, Italy, to the Parma Cup. It's a tournament that's run 36 years, and uh, we actually won gold uh, with the 18U team. And I got to tell you, it was really competitive. It was great, and uh, it was the experience for a lifetime. So, um, you know, it's fun. We actually have a I'm going up to meet with uh, Major League Baseball on October 10th. My partner, Matt, and uh, Matt Foley, who's a big part of us, he played for me, graduated in 03, played at Virginia Tech. And that's a huge part of what we do, and uh, we're doing this together and growing it. And uh, him and Justin Counts will we'll be heading up to New York to meet with uh, Commissioner Manfred and Chris Marinak and, uh, and those guys. We look forward to uh, – to going up and seeing the MLB headquarters and, and talking about how we can grow this wonderful game together um, overseas, especially in Europe and uh, in those countries that, uh, you know, again, the better the game gets, the better it is for everybody. So we're making it, it sounds a little corny, but we're making a difference um, around the world, not just here locally or in the United States. And uh, Diamond Allegiance is a big, going to be a big part of that in our growth moving forward. And that partnership is huge because it's giving us the opportunity to grow with other organizations that we might not have been able to meet or connect with. And, you know, you know, I will say this, you know, there's a lot of great venues out there uh, to play baseball, perfect game, PBRs and all those. And they, they do a wonderful job, but uh, we're trying to open people's eyes to there's more to it than just, you know, playing in the same tournaments every year, Cooperstown for 12 U. That's a great, uh, a rite of passage for kids. So again, I think that uh, playing baseball overseas is really, and having the experience with your family is something that is some, something everybody should take, uh, take advantage of. Absolutely. I've got two follow-up questions on, on that. Um, what are your top three favorite places that you visited uh, playing baseball? Um, I'll, I'll let you answer that one first and then I'll have one more follow up for you. Ooh, man, that is, you are good. That's a loaded question. Man. <laughs> um, wow. I'm looking at the wall. I didn't go to Japan, but our Japan trip was Scott Rowland, Morgan Spencer, John Skaggs. Um, they had an incredible trip to Japan in 19, um, just to see how it was done there. We just brought a, a group of Chinese players in this past summer. That was our first group we brought here. But for me, um, I would say Prague is one 
Uh, obviously, Italy is phenomenal, um, and there, you know I've been all over. Um, and then to change gears, I think Latin America, the, the Dominican is special. Yeah. So they're all, you know, the Dominican, the Latin American, Puerto Rico, and the DR are totally different trips than, say, the European trips. Because the baseball, when you go to DR and to Puerto Rico, you got to buckle up. Right. <laughs> it's, uh, it's on, and we've had great success there, and yeah. it's extremely competitive. I've built great relationships. Like Coach Wildo out of Cabaret, he is a, they call him the Coach K of Dominican baseball. And wow. uh, I've built a wonderful relationship with him. And, uh, I'd like to. I'm, I'm glad to say that I'm one of the few American coaches that could say that we're two and zero against them in our battles. Uh, <laughs> but again, Prague is really special to see what they're building. When in terms of baseball, I would say the Netherlands is probably the most prominent because there's so much baseball in the Netherlands, uh, Italy. But Italy, they love it. Um, you know, that's where Joe DiMaggio is. You know, right eating a tuna. And but those are probably my favorites, like as of now. But again, you know what. The world's a big place. I, I'm going to be heading to, you know, we're going to be doing Australia soon. And uh, again, there's a lot that we've got. Gosh, we've already got over 30 trips, like I said, booked for coming for the, um, for this summer, uh, for 24, I should say, spring, summer, and fall. But those are probably yeah. the ones if I could say Hawaii wasn't bad. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> so before we move on to the rest of this interview, um, where can uh, people find more information on the international um, trips that you guys run if they're interested and they, they run into this interview. Yeah, uh, MVP-INTL.com um, or just Google MVP International Athletics and it takes you right to our site. You can see our archives. We've got past trips over the years. We've got all our trips. For, uh, you know, We've got many, not all of them are up there yet, but many of our trips for 24 are already up. Uh, you know, one of the things that people don't realize is you don't, you know, you can inquire. You don't have to be invited. It's not a... Uh, Invite only, you know, again, you know, you can't patent the United States of America, but, uh, you know, we are, we're not affiliated at all with USA Baseball because that's just an incredible thing that they do. But what we are is we do represent the United States when we go overseas because that's where we're from and we're proud of it. And there's definitely the red, white, white, and blue is a big deal, man. And when you represent your country, you're playing for, in, with, you know, for your country, it's huge. So that's where you go. I will say this. We're going back real quick. You know, one thing I don't want to forget I think also one of my most special moments was Cooperstown, New York, playing up there at Dreams Park. Uh, you know, I did that twice with my two boys, and I, I think that uh, there's a lot of people out there who have done it, and I think we need more experiences like that at different age levels, and that's kind of what we're trying to, to brand for people. Absolutely. I couldn't I couldn't agree with you more. I think uh, it, it's done really well at the youth level, and for some reason, uh, we lose sight of that experience, right, at the at the older age groups um, in travel baseball, and I think it's something. Obviously, uh, the Diamond Allegiance is working on with with your group, and I think it's something that's that's definitely needed, right? Um, you know, making making these events experiences that can be remembered for a lifetime. Um, you know, Cooperstown does it great. Obviously, Ripken Experience does it great. Ripken, oh, we've done Ripken. Cal, yeah. his stuff is phenomenal. You know. They bought uh, Cooperstown. Um, the village actually. So Cooper's right. tax booming. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Um, so we're going to switch gears um, back to the, the Academy, to the teams. Um, if you could, when you, when you look at the Academy, when you look at the teams, if you could think of one word that kind of encapsulates what you want from your players, um, what you want from your staff, you know, that really describes your program what would that be? And then the follow-up is, is how do you try to go about your daily business um, by, and showing the example um, to do that? Well, I would say if I had to pick one word, I'd say development. Um, you know, if we focus on development, which we lose focus, everybody wants to play. Everybody wants to compete. Now, you trust me. I, I, I told my wife uh, coming back from my son's uh, Lynchburg, they won a national title. We were coming back from a game last year and, I looked at her and said, honey, I've got an addiction problem and uh, not to make light of that. Uh, and she looked at me crazy and uh, she's like, what do you mean? What, what, what? And I said, I'm either addicted to coaching, winning or competition. 
And she said, uh, the answer is D, all of the above. <laughs> so uh, I think I know a, a lot of our friends, you included, uh, well, we've got a lot of people in this game that are like that. And, you know, this is, it, it's not what defines me uh, by any means, because I have a beautiful family and things I love and relationships. But man, I, I, this game has given us so much, given me so much. So when I think about development, I use development as a word, because that's, a, a, you could, I could give you 15 words right off the bat. But we focus on development. We stay focused on development. And um, what is development? How's that look? You know, it, it's it's not just physical development. It's not just fielding ground balls and hitting. It's um, it's much the mental side. You know, I just we had a workout last night with my 24. We played night. We went indoors on a sunny night because we needed to have. I wanted you know in the fall. I you know we don't get as you know as much as great to hit outside, hit on the field. You know, I'm a big believer in there's got to be a balance in that drill package, too, and working on the swing in the fall. These kids haven't been doing that. They come out of winter training. They go to high school season six days a week. And then throughout the summer and fall, those swings may get longer. They may, you know, so we went inside and we actually talked for 40 minutes and we hit for 25, 30 because the talking part and the being honest and being real we call it the moment of truth where we talk about, okay, all you guys are at the point now, I guess six of these kids have committed. We have nine more that will commit. Every kid on this team will be, a, will play college baseball. We've got two teams at the 24 level. Um, you know, and I got to tell you, status has become such a big part of baseball and it's the part I don't like, you know, and it's the hard part in 2023. I think we could all agree. We've had these conversations, um, you know, uh, coach, I want to be a D1 player, I, I, or I don't want to play. Then you don't want to play college baseball. Do you want to be a college baseball player? That's the big thing. So we try to stay focused in the moment, focused on being the best player. We can be the best person we can be. We do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. These are things we preach. So if I had a second word, it'd probably be relationships, because we build relationships that last a lifetime. You know, I had a, one of my high school players call me Friday night. I was leaving a football game. It's 930 at night. And uh, you know, him, his girlfriend broke up and, uh, you know, I, I love the fact that in today's age when, you know, with depression and things like that, that these kids feel that they can call you on a Friday night because he just needs somebody to talk to you for a few minutes, kind of talk them off the edge a little bit. And, uh, but that's what this is about. It's about development. It's about relationships. And to me, they're one and the same, because again, they got to build into that trust. They got to know that you got their back. And, and again, it's, you know, I guess another one would be, you know, you have to evolve. And, uh, you know, I, I learned that through Mike Krzyzewski and the guys like, you know, Tommy Slater, Pat McMahon, you know, they told me years ago and opportunities to meet them, you, you've got to evolve in coaching with the game, with kids as you get older. It's not the same kid every year. Every year we have new players that come in and, you know, in high school, it's four years. You got four years to get, give them the best of what we have. But every year I tell my teams, I want to do it with you. You know, the tradition of the program is one thing. So at the, at the travel level, it's the same thing, but you're taking kids from different schools. I've got kids from gosh, different 18, 20 different schools, you know, yeah. at the high school level, our dogs program. Uh, and and they, they come in and, you know, their high school coaches are great coaches and I've got relationships. And I think those coaches trust me as well with their kids. And that's a big part of it. So. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you talk about that answers it. So. It does, man, for sure. And and I, I think one point that I just want to echo is, you know, this idea that um, you have to evolve as a coach, right? Like today's players aren't the same as five years ago, 10 years ago, obviously 20 or 30 years ago, right? The game evolves, culture evolves. And it's so important for us as, as coaches um, and mentors to be able to evolve with that, um, you know, and be able to relate to the kids. I think, Budge, for me, the same as you, right? Like I, I'm – you know, so I think the best way to put it is, you know, you first start coaching because you think that you're going to help somebody else out. And then you realize that you're actually doing it because it helps you. Right. And those relationships help you. And it actually becomes kind of a selfish thing, not selfish, but more like, you know, like these kids are so rewarding to me. They're my family. And, and you, you know, if you do it that way, um, you know, getting those phone calls, getting those wedding invitations, getting those, you know, first baby um, announcements, I think is, is what really, really, when you boils down to it is keeps us excited and keeps us going, uh, when you know, it comes I, to coaching the game. I think that is, you nailed it. it. It's so true for me. That's what I, you know, I think I get asked a lot and I, I, I'm fortunate to be able to speak. I got to speak in front of, at the Texas state conference last year in front of 
you know, that's pressure because those guys down there, they take it serious. And there's 30, what, 3,600 coaches that have attended and, you know, I've been on the national stage. And, and when I talk about it, the game, it's made me, you're right. It's made me a better person. It, it's, it's, it's made, helped me accountable to where I've got to be the best version of me so I can help others. And, you know, you represent your family. I think, you know, you always kind of feel like there's always people out there that are maybe waiting to see if this guy's for real, is he, you know, or they're waiting to see you fail or see your name in a newspaper for something. And uh, other than for helping people are being successful. And I think that, uh, you know, on the, on the flip side of the weddings and the babies and, and all that now I'm coaching kids, you know, I had a kid yesterday. I was telling one of my, uh, my director of operations, uh, I, I told her, uh, I said, I coach that kid's dad, you know, and, uh, and uh, told a funny story about it. But I also, on the flip side, the tough one is now we're getting, some of the parents are passing away. You know, I had a call from a young man who's, he called me at 640 in the morning and told me his dad just passed and, uh, you know, spent 30 minutes with him uh, just talking about, you know, some of his dad's greatest times were at our baseball games or at our MVP games and the high school games. And so again, you know, you know, you become, you become all things, you know, a coach that Tommy Lasorda, I had a wonderful opportunity to meet him at a Nats game many years ago. And uh, he was sent up by a friend of mine that worked with the Nats. He came up and I look up and I got my two little kids there, my two oldest uh, of the three. And he says, coach, you know, he, he already looked at me and just said, Hey, Pudge, how are you doing? I turn around. I'm like dugout wizard, you know, from uh, back in the day. And I called and said, coach Lasorda, it's an honor to meet you. Oh my God. I, I went speechless, which if you know me, that's impossible. Right. But, um, yeah. Anyway, he goes, thank you for calling me coach. Most people call me Tommy these days. And let me just, if I share one thing with you, Pudge, I heard you do a lot of great things that I, I said, but, uh, the, the word coach is defined, um, you earn it. It's like a lawyer. It's like a doctor. It's, you know, you have to earn it and you can't just take that title. You mm -hmm. earn it over time and through relationships and experiences. And that stuck with me. Mm -hmm. And that hit me. And, uh, you know, when you hear from a guy like that, man, it's this game. Like I said, the relationships are amazing. Well, it takes me perfectly. So relationships, obviously doing what you're doing, um, you know, you're the leader, but obviously the things that you're doing can't be done alone. Right. So, who are some of the important people um, within your guys' organization that that help things go? Well, you know, I think it's it's within the growth in the organization. It's easy uh, with the baseball school. I mean, I've got you know so many coaches from different high schools that you know we we kind of all are in it together. Uh, I just give them a venue to do it and to teach. And and you know all these guys, you don't make a ton of money being a coach, so you got to take care of your people and. Uh, yeah. And so there is that money aspect to it. And I think, truthfully, I think uh, it's funny. You look back, I think things really changed when A-Rod signed, signed with the Rangers. I can pinpoint that. You know, when you saw that big contract, people started getting more development. So that's when the the, the, the academy thing changed. But in our organization, you know, Brent Weiss, um, Justin Counts, um, you know, I look at uh, Morgan Spencer at South Lakes, who played for me. He's the head coach. He's at our con in our conference right now. I look at what... Uh, you know, what these guys are doing in, in terms of our academy. And we've got, gosh, we've got 32 high school coaches that train with our MVP academy. So there's too many to name, um, you know, and uh, like I said, Jack Farrick with Catchers U is doing some stuff with us now. And we, Mike Benz, Mike Benz is a great one. He's one of my commissioners, Terry DeWire. These guys are all high school coaches. They're the best of the best, but they're great with people and they're tremendous with kids. On the international side, man, we've got a great team. We've got, you know, 18, 20 employees that are here all the time. But Matt Foley, my partner, um, you know, I think about, uh, you know, with, with Justin Counts, who's our head football coach. He's with my assistant in baseball. He's with us full time. Matt, Matt, uh, Wojciechowski, this is a great story. Matt runs our sales team and he just uh, literally accepted a job and he's going to stay with us, but he's now the assistant head coach at Roanoke College. Um, and it, it all kind of, kind of came to fruition about two weeks ago uh, where Coach Ulrich down at Roanoke, you know, was really wanted Matt because that's where he played. Um, and Matt told him, if I can continue to work with MVP International because we're, we're, we're changing lives, we're, we're, um, he's really passionate. So it worked out that he could keep the job, but now he's down there doing his thing. And it, I had to push him out the door. It's like he was a high school coach here, but he was at that crossroads where in that age where I said, Matt, if you don't go do this, 
you're going to miss it. High school coach, but you're not going to be, you got to go get into it now. And he's going to be a head coach. He's going to crush it down in the ODAC conference. So again, not only are we helping players, we're, we're developing coaches and, and helping coaches. So these are some guys, like I said, Tanya Brogan, who works out of Florida, she handles all our travel. She's phenomenal. We have our own travel agents here. We do everything in-house. And um, so again, I, I don't want to, I know I'm forgetting people, Rich Steele and all these guys, but again, just an, we have an incredible team, uh, both at the academy level and an incredible team at the international level. And, you know, our goal is we don't want to let anybody down. And we have with the international, it's funny, we've got some families have gone on eight trips with us now. We have wow. over a 70% retention rate of people that come back. Uh, and that's something that I take great pride in because if you're going to trust in me to send you and your family on a once in a lifetime experience. And it's funny because I say this all the time, kids, you know, you've got, you know, anybody's got kids knows they're going to ask you for a bat, a glove, a video game. Okay. And in years to come at Christmas time, they're, they're, you know, they're not going to remember that stuff, but they will always remember the fact that you spent time with them or you took them on an international trip or the time you got to play baseball in Italy or uh, went and saw the world or went to Japan, you know, they're not going to forget that. You know, it's the time spent and the experiences that we don't forget as we get older. And that's what, you know, if we're, we're trying to get more people to open their eyes to that and there's a price to it, but you know what, we don't cut corners. We're going to, we stay in the best hotels and we're going to make it a, a once in a lifetime trip. And hopefully, you know, like I said, in many cases, it becomes a four or five in a lifetime. Four or five in a lifetime trip. But yeah, it's fun, you know, <laughs> Billy Wagner, I've got Billy Wagner, who everybody knows, Billy's, yeah, we're doing more stuff with us, and uh, Billy's going to be a Hall of Famer, should have been a Hall of Famer a while ago. We've got some MLB guys right here that want to be involved, so Billy's going to, him and Randy Tomlin, some of those guys, are. we're going to get them on the road with us next summer. They're excited to be a part of this, so it's growing, and it's fun, and I can't wait to get up and get up to the MLB headquarters and continue to grow this wonderful game that we love. It's awesome, bud. So, obviously, you've been doing this for a long time. You've seen a lot of baseball. Um if you could go back to that, you know, 17, 18 year old self when you were coaching that that little league team and and the end of little league, right? And you could give that that coach one piece of advice. Um, what would it be? <laughs> Patience. Be patient. Learn. Um, and it was advice I got from people. Um, and as I've, you know, I feel like right now it's funny because that now I'm at the age where everybody says, "How much longer are you going to do this?" You know, I'm you know 50, I just turned 56 years old. Uh, I'm retired during the school day, but I'm still coaching at Madison. I don't have any plans to leave there. I've had some other opportunities, had some opportunities to go to the college game. But I would tell that I feel like I'm at my peak right now. Like, why would I get out when I have the most to offer right now? And I think I've been good with Lord willing. I've got a lot of years in front of me to help people and help coaches. And But I, I would look back at that young guy and just go, you know what? Don't take it too serious. You know, like, you know, it, it's – Although, you know, you want to build your name. And I think you said it best earlier. Let's be honest. When we all get in this, we want to see how good we can be. We want to see how many wins we can collect. We don't want to fail. So I was told at a young age to study. Don't be afraid that even though somebody may come across to you as an 18-year-old, that they're just human beings. They're not stars. And Pat McMahon actually taught me that. So my first year, I took a head coaching job. Coach Mack, Tommy Slater, who's with the Marlins. Coach Mack is with the Yankees. These guys were, Pat McMahon took me aside of Richmond and I was the first one in the conference that morning. He laughed. He said, you must be a first year. And I said, yeah. So he <laughs> came with me and I got, I owe that guy so much. And what I learned was I wasn't afraid to call to meet coaches. Augie Garrido, I spent, well, one of my favorite things is Augie was in my life. I met him in 92 at a tournament. I walked in his office at Cal State Fullerton and said, uh, coach, I, I, I told a secretary at the time, we were playing in the upper deck and I was an assistant coach. I said, uh, can I speak with Coach Garrido? And she started laughing and yelled in the back. Uh, it might have been Coach Horton now, but whoever the assistant was, they were all laughing. They're like, hey, uh, Coach Garrido, is, it's Southern California. You won't see him till noon. And this was 10 o'clock. <laughs> so anyway, what happened was that night, I ended up uh, meeting up with him at a 
establishment across the from the the the, the, the coach's offices. Uh, got to meet a guy named Rich Hoffman, who's the winningest coach in high school history uh, from down in Florida. And uh, those relationships just built. Next thing you know, Augie recruits one of my kids, the first kid ever from Virginia, Andy McGuire, ends up going to the University of Texas. And we get on a call. We hadn't talked in a few years. And he's like, Pudge, I got Andy here. It's Augie. <laughs> I can't believe he didn't. You know, he brought up that he's playing for you. And I said, I know Pudge. And so anyway, after that, we became even closer because Augie didn't take it too serious. And, you know, he would call me on just, I'd see the phone. I, I was like, I, I'm like being starstruck because, you know, he's Augie. He's got that aura about him. But, yeah. you know, he, one, he gave me a motivational speech one day. He was playing at AM. He said, Pudge, I understand you got a big game today. He goes, Well, we got it. We're at AM and we kicked her beep last night. And he goes, uh, We're going to kick their ass. I was say, We're going to kick their ass tonight. And uh, he said, you know, and I understand you got a playoff game and, and you know, you're going to do the same because you don't have a spirit about you. So here he's mo- like, I can't even, I'm, I go, in love. <laughs> my game has been written by Augie Garrido. Right. And uh, That's great. So anyway, those are the guys, man. And and so looking back, they, they don't, don't be afraid to pick up the phone because we're all baseball people. I think guys are afraid to ask and afraid to learn. I've taken, I've stolen so much and I've made it my own. And now I share with people and, I think that's the biggest thing. Don't be afraid to ask and and be patient and and okay, you know, because if you fail at first, you know, you got to keep going, man. You got to keep going in this game. And you know, I think I've probably I, I feel good about the fact that I've been able to maybe help other young coaches and who are building their programs. I, it's a different love now, man. It's like I love watching other people succeed. And so yeah. that's what yeah. I want to yeah. succeed. No doubt. I think we, I think as you get older, I mean, I know, um, you know, for me, it's the same way, right? Like, you know, you're in your twenties, your thirties, your early forties, and it's, it's all about what you can do and establishing yourself. And then, then you realize that, you know, it's really cool to to enjoy other people's successes as well and to, and to be a part of those. So, you know, giving back is, is obviously super important. And that's why I'm in the position I'm at the Diamond Allegiance now, right. Is trying, trying to bring this together and, uh, and to help all these organizations. Um, so and I, I think that's, I think it's huge because here's the thing. I mean, that's why that's what we're all in this for. We, really, if we're not, then we need to get out. You're not going to make it anyway. And I just had a mom come up to me Saturday. Her son just committed uh, to a division one school and he pitched a gym on Saturday morning at a tournament. And she introduced herself. She says, coach, I just want to thank you. Cause he was with another organization that then they were traveling all over the planet and they didn't need to spend all that money. And, and uh, you know, we try to keep it cost efficient for everybody and get put on a great product. And, she said, I just want to introduce myself and thank you, but I have no idea why you helped my son this summer. Like he, you never coached him. He played at the Crosstown high school. And I said, ma'am, it's pretty simple. He pitched against us open at night. And when my first round pick Bryce Eldridge comes back and says, I don't know who that kid is, but he's nasty. And he's my <laughs> and so I just, when I, I see a kid that has, has it and isn't six, three, maybe he's five, nine, five, 10, you know, if I can help somebody, it doesn't matter what they play for me or not. I would do it just to do it because that's what we all need to do. So, Absolutely. well, um, I know we, we probably tiptoed around this, um, but I'm going to, I'm going to group these two kind of together here, Pudge. Um, what gets you most excited about being part of this baseball ecosystem? You know, what, what would you really say is your why? And then specific to travel ball. Um, if there was, if you were the commissioner, if there was such a thing and, you were the commissioner of travel ball. What's the first thing that you would do to, to, to make the landscape better? Well, that two things, that's either, those are to me that the one, the last one's an easy one and it's got to happen. And we're working on that right now. And hopefully that'll come to fruition. But the why is, uh, you know, what are we leaving here? You know, what do we, you know, I've, have, you know, we've had success. I, again, I, I feel blessed. I feel like I've got the greatest. Every time I'm on a field, I tell people I got the best office on the planet. So, you know, um, God's been great to me, and I want to make sure that I'm giving everything I can back and, and leave this place and leave the game better than when I found it. And, you know, everybody talks about it, even if you make a little difference, you know, I, I you know, I'm comfortable with making a difference. And I think that's the why right now. Um, you know, the success comes with doing 
the right things. Uh, you know, I'm a firm believer that the baseball gods are 100% real. And I'm a believer that the game knows. Eric Backage taught me that. He spoke at our preseason banquet one night and probably one of the, you know, we've had some wonderful people come to our preseason banquet. And Eric spoke on the game. And I've used that ever since because the game does know. And if you cheat the game, it's going to cheat you, man. It, it's it's the craziest thing. And uh, But in terms of bettering the game, that's the easy one for me. we got to do it at the grassroots level. Um, you know, we just had one of my team that I had a coach call me the other day and not even one of my teams and he was playing another team and they pulled their team off the field because the other team's parents and coaches were getting on a 13 year old umpire uh, mm -hmm. made him cry and you know like told him he was blind and 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 that team was winning they were winning like the other team you know and so what are we doing and and so it's real simple um, and working with Rob Hani, uh, Diamond Allegiance, the ABCA, you know, we all are working for the same common goal. Uh, for me, it's taking at the 12U level. Mm -hmm. And last one, it's kind of like the, I think everybody says it's the wild, wild west. When you listen to former MLB guys, Billy Wagner, man, has such great insight. And he's like, hey, we've got to lasso this. We've got to get some structure to the travel world. Uh, it's so business run right now. And, turn, and everybody has different opinion. You know, anybody says it's, that there's not financials gain behind it, they're crazy. Uh, there are people out there that don't. But, I mean, there's so many things that play into it. And we've got to have common rules and common, you know, common law uh, amongst the game. So for me, I'm a real big believer in little league baseball. Okay. I love little league. I love our little league and I'm a big believer. We have a program here called the rest and warriors that I run. I coached in it for two years. They're kind of like the poster child for it's called league based travel. And it, it it's to protect little league. Okay. Uh, it's basically, I call, I've changed. I don't even use the word travel. I call it advanced placement baseball, AP baseball. So right. in our, 12 view teams are called AP. Okay. It's no different than taking advanced science classes, history, chorus, music. You know, if you want to go train and get better at baseball, well, you should do that. But what it is, is you play house. We work with the house league. Uh, the kids must play in their house league. Um, and if we can get, you know, I'm, I'm going, this is my, my mission right now is to try to get with the help of Diamond Allegiance, with the help of uh, the ABCA and the National High School Coaches Asian, the NHSBCA. Um, we've got a lot of great coaches out there that want to see this. So that way we're watching pitch counts. You know, what people don't think about, the catchers, they're throwing catchers and pitchers. A kid will catch a game, then the second game he'll go pitch and throw 115 pitches. It's ridiculous. Okay, yet he just threw 115 back to the pitcher, you know. Or, so, again, those things were not – we, we just need, we've got people that have a great, that have been there, understood it. We don't know it all. Don't claim to know it all. But if we can get, protect the Little League game, okay, yet still give them advanced placement, more coaching, play on Sundays. You know, Sunday, there's leagues, NVTBL here for us, Northern Virginia Travel Baseball League. They do a wonderful job of monitoring that. Um, and you know what? We've got to have standards for everybody and rules. And so if you work within your league, and otherwise what's going to happen is there are, there are these travel organizations that they're not being governed, and they're going and taking kids out of Little League baseball. Well, some places will say, well, we don't even play Little League here. Okay, that's fine. But you know what? we got to keep the fun in the game at 12U and – and, and here's what, now, this is probably the best thing. And my son taught me this, Josh, uh, who plays at Lynchburg. He was talking to a young man that he was working with last year. And he said, I said, what did you talk to him about? Because it's, it's another coach's son that I'm friends with. And that coach asked for Josh to talk to him. And he said, I just asked him what his why is. Why does he play baseball? He said, well, I don't know. My dad's a coach and this is what I do. And, you know, do you have fun with it? Uh, yeah, it's okay. And he's like, you know, he goes, well, you got to change your why, mm -hmm. you know, you need to, you should be playing at 12 U to have fun. That should be the base, the premise, have fun. So, yes, yeah, you can go, go see how good you are, but have fun. And what I tell my middle school kids is now the why changes I, because I want to be a high school player. I still want to have fun, but now I got to work a little bit harder if I want to continue to play the game. When I get to the high school level, you know, I want to, now it's, I want to see how good I can be. That's my why. Cause my son, Josh said, I got to a point in high school, now it was fun, but I want to see how good I could be and how long I could, how, how far I could take this game. And so I think those are the things that we need to change at the grassroots level. And I'm going to say this, and Matt, this is a tribute to you, to Sandy Og, 
to all the people involved with Diamond Allegiance. As soon as I heard about this, I couldn't wait to be a part of it. Okay, because what you guys do is you're bringing great organizations from around the country. You're trying to bring that together because together we can all make these adjustments together. We can help get more kids into colleges, um, you know, because in the South, there's not a lot of D3 baseball. You know, let's, those kids, D3 is college baseball. It's phenomenal. It's like the game is getting so good and so athletic. And as you can tell, I'm passionate about this, but um, the relationships, people I've met, because of the Diamond Allegiance, um, when you got guys like Eric Backage or, or, you know, Coach Smith from Woodson or, you know, Coach or some of the, or some of the best co coaches in the college game, work with some of the best in the high school game, and then it, it's, go it's, it's going to be a huge success. So, and so I thank you for what and commend you guys for bringing this together and giving all of us a chance to meet and, and share. Well, I appreciate that, Bud. And obviously, you know, it's a vision that's starting to become a reality more and more. I think that the, the, the baseball world will be hearing and seeing a lot more of, of the Diamond Allegiance. And we've been working behind closed doors for probably, what, 18 or 24 months now. Um, but, you know, really starting to get some momentum with what's going on. And, and it's it's fun to work with uh, with people like you. And that's what we've got. And that's what we've attracted across the country is, is the right people. And I think that's what I'm most excited about. Well, well one thing, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to short this either because I didn't even get in that. That's just from my standpoint, but from the player standpoint, it's the curve app. That app is, and we're just now figuring out, we're actually having our meeting. We're going to, I'm going to introduce it. I were a lot of people are using it for high school players in my organization. I, I think it'll best benefit our organization because, and this is what's great about it is we're going to do it at the middle school level with our church program, because that's where, in my opinion, and you all give us the freedom to do that, it's that's where it's going to make the biggest difference because we start hitting the weight room. We start training. And, you know, for those that don't know what the curve app is, it's, it's an app that you all have created the diamond allegiance that offers discounts at tournaments that offers so much on player development, drills, skills, on field skills, but also the, the training uh, in terms of your own body, speed, strength. And, and so uh, it, you guys have put a lot of time into that and it's, it's, and you, it's still a work in, in progress. Like anything that's worthwhile is you, when I say that, not because it's not great now, but you, you continue to better it every time I turn around. I just wish I was a better technology guy. So I didn't need some of my guys and that's not a knock on you guys. That's on me, yeah. but I've got younger coaches that are running that side for me, and thank God for them because, again, it's not difficult. But uh, again, it's, it's I can only do so much, so I, I I enjoy putting people in that process. But that curve app is in, in terms of player development, what you guys are doing, it's second to none. No, we appreciate that, and we're just luck. Obviously, we've mentioned Eric Backage a lot. I can I can tell you that obviously having a brain, a baseball brain like his, behind what we're doing. Um, is, is so big. It's so big for players across the country um, and the technology that we're bringing uh, to aid, to really aid in player development. I um, was talking to one of our groups earlier today, um, GBG out of California, um, you know, Michael Garcia Parra. And, and, you know, I, and I mean this, right? Like the, the Diamond Allegiance, yeah, the Curb app is, is amazing, but it's never going to replace a coach, right? It's, a, it's an aid to a coach. You know, relationships are so important, and we've we've detailed that today. So, well, it's, a tool, I, I, it's a tool we have. It's a tool that we can utilize. It's a great tool. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, Pudge, those are the end of my questions. I certainly appreciate your time. Um, I think one last thing I'd like to say to all those listening is, um, you will be seeing the Diamond Allegiance, you know, working tightly with MVP International, um, trying to provide um, all the players across. The Diamond Allegiance, um, you know, network with opportunities to not only um, travel internationally, but um, you know, do things here um, in the states that can be a lot of fun. That can be an experience where, as you can see behind Pudge, where you can compete, travel, and vacation at the same time. Try to reimagine again one of our two taglines: "Stronger Together." We talked about and reimagine travel baseball, and, and and that's what we're trying to do. And through people and relationships like we have with Pudge, we're able to do that. So, Pudge, I, I certainly appreciate your time today. Thank you for detailing what you guys are doing. And obviously, um, from a, a former high school coach myself, being able to spend time with one of the true legends in high school baseball, I always appreciate the time, Pudge. So thank you very much. You're very kind, Matt. I appreciate it. And like I said, I, you know, any chance I get to, to talk baseball and talk about better in the game with anybody. But again, 
what you're doing and we miss you in the game, but you're still involved and you're making a difference from a di- from a different view. So appreciate you. Thanks for having me today. And uh, again, we'll, I'll be seeing you soon. All right. Thank you, Punch. All right. Take care, man.